Many people grow up hearing the word vagina used to describe everything related to the female genitals, but this isn't actually correct. The outside part you can see is called the vulva, while the vagina is an internal passage inside the body. Understanding the difference helps people talk about their bodies more accurately, recognize where symptoms are happening, and feel more confident when discussing health concerns. The confusion usually starts early because many families, schools, and even adults use vagina as a catch-all term. Over time, this becomes a habit that can make the real anatomy seem more complicated than it actually is. When we look closely and break it down step by step, the structure of the vulva and vagina becomes much clearer. The vulva is everything on the outside. It includes several parts that work together to protect the internal organs, allow for sexual sensation, support urination, and provide an entry point to the reproductive system. If someone looks at the front of the body between the legs, the first thing they would see is the mons pubis, the soft, fatty area that sits over the pubic bone. This area often has pubic hair after puberty, which helps cushion the skin from friction. Below the mons pubis is the rest of the vulva, which contains the outer labia, inner labia, clitoris, urethral opening, and vaginal opening. The outer labia, also called the labia majora, are two folds of skin that usually have hair on their outer surfaces. They act like protective cushions, guarding the more delicate inner structures. Inside them are the inner labia, or labia minora, which are thinner folds of skin that do not grow hair and vary greatly in size, shape, and color from person to person. The inner labia protect the openings beneath them, and they also contain many nerve endings, which makes them sensitive to touch and changes in temperature. Moving inward, the next structures are the clitoris and the urethral opening. The clitoris is a small, highly sensitive organ located at the top of the inner labia. What many people see on the outside is only the tip. Inside the body, the clitoris extends downward and around in a shape that resembles a wishbone. It contains a network of nerves and blood vessels that respond to stimulation, causing it to swell slightly when blood flow increases. This swelling is part of the body's natural sexual response. Below the clitoris is the urethral opening, a small passage that leads to the bladder and allows urine to leave the body. Because the urethra is short, bacteria can enter it more easily, which is why urinary tract infections are more common in people with vulvas. Under the urethral opening is the entrance to the vagina, also called the vaginal opening. Some people are taught that this opening is the vagina itself, but the vagina is actually the tube-like internal passage that begins at this opening and extends upward inside the pelvis. The vulva ends at the external opening. Everything beyond that opening is internal and is part of the vagina and reproductive system, not part of the vulva. Understanding the vagina requires thinking about what happens inside the body. The vagina is a flexible, muscular canal with the ability to stretch and return to its resting shape. It connects the outside of the body to the cervix, which is the lower part of the uterus. The lining of the vagina, called the mucosa, produces natural lubrication. This lubrication isn't always noticeable, but increases with arousal, making the vaginal walls more slippery. This process happens because blood flow increases to the pelvic region, causing moisture to move through the vaginal walls. The vaginal environment also maintains a balance of bacteria and acidity that helps protect against infections. Many people hear the term pH when learning about vaginal health. This simply refers to how acidic or alkaline something is. A healthy vagina is slightly acidic, which prevents harmful bacteria from growing too quickly. One common source of confusion comes from the fact that some activities involve both the vulva and the vagina. For example, during sexual activity, the vulva experiences touch and pressure, while the vagina may experience penetration. During childbirth, a baby passes through the vagina, not the vulva. And during menstruation, blood flows from the uterus, through the cervix, and out through the vagina before reaching the outside of the body. Because the vagina has so many internal roles and is discussed frequently in health education, it often gets mentioned more than the vulva, even when the topic is actually about the external anatomy. Over time, this leads people to use vagina to mean everything, which reinforces the misunderstanding. Another reason people mix up these terms is discomfort. Many cultures do not talk openly about genital anatomy, especially female anatomy. 
When people feel embarrassed or uncertain, they default to the word they hear most often. However, using the correct words helps remove some of that discomfort. When someone knows the difference between their vulva and vagina, they can describe symptoms more accurately. For example, burning or itching on the skin of the vulva is different from discomfort deeper inside the vagina. These differences matter because they can help a health care provider understand whether the issue is irritation of the external skin, a yeast overgrowth, or a bacterial imbalance inside the vagina. Inside the vagina, changes happen throughout a person's life. During puberty, increased estrogen levels cause the vaginal lining to thicken, and natural lubrication becomes more consistent. The vulva also changes at this time. The labia may grow, darken, or change shape. These changes are a normal part of development. During the menstrual cycle, hormone levels shift, affecting natural moisture and sensitivity. For example, around ovulation, sexual arousal may feel stronger because of increased blood flow and lubrication. After menopause, when estrogen levels fall, the vaginal walls may become thinner and produce less lubrication, a condition sometimes called vaginal dryness. This change can make the tissue more fragile and affect comfort during intercourse. These changes are not caused by the vulva. They happen inside the vagina because the vaginal tissue responds directly to hormones circulating in the bloodstream. The vulva, on the other hand, experiences changes mostly related to external factors such as friction, moisture, hair growth, and skin sensitivity. The skin of the vulva can become irritated by products like scented soaps, tight clothing, or shaving. Because the vulva is exposed to the outside environment, it is more vulnerable to irritation than the vagina, which is protected inside the body. People often think something is wrong with their vagina when the issue is actually on the vulva. For example, redness, chafing, or ingrown hairs happen on the vulva, not inside the vagina. Recognizing this difference helps people take better care of both areas. The way the vulva and vagina work together also contributes to the confusion between them. During arousal, blood flow increases to both areas, but each responds in its own way. The vulva may swell slightly, especially the inner labia, while the clitoris becomes more sensitive. Inside the body, the vagina lengthens and expands. These changes help prepare the body for comfortable penetration. The cervix, located at the top of the vagina, may lift slightly as the vagina changes shape. All of these internal shifts happen automatically, controlled by nerves and blood vessels responding to arousal signals from the brain. Because these changes occur inside the vagina and cannot be seen from the outside, many people learn to associate all sexual responses with the word vagina, even though the vulva plays a large role. Body awareness grows stronger when people understand how these parts function. Knowing the term vulva can help someone realize that arousal often begins externally with stimulation of the clitoris and labia. Similarly, understanding the vagina's internal nature helps people recognize why certain sensations feel deeper or more pressure-based. It also helps people understand why certain medical tests, such as a pelvic exam or pap test, involve the vagina and cervix and not the vulva. Overall, people get the terms vulva and vagina mixed up because of habit, limited education, and a tendency to oversimplify anatomy, but learning the distinction supports clearer communication and greater comfort with one's own body. The vulva is the external part, the skin, the folds, the clitoris, and the openings you can see. The vagina is the internal passage leading to the cervix and uterus. Each plays a different role both in daily life and in reproductive health. When these terms are used accurately, people gain a more complete understanding of how their bodies work and feel better prepared to care for their health throughout their lives.